this one interesting book and it's called the nectar of instruction the nectar of instruction begins in its first verse it explains that you want to have influence in the world it's a natural thing we all want to have or leave like a positive impact in the world so it says do you want to live a positive impact in the world the first thing you need to do is to be situated within yourself and he talks about controlling yourself and owning your own domain you know, connecting with the words that you speak, what you internalize, what you take in, the food, the, your lifestyle, and basically sitting in a space where you're connected in the self. And then only once you're connected within yourself, then can you be able to have a much more transformative impact in somebody else's life. Mm. You know, so that's like the first instruction, control yourself, have own your domain, and then you can pass that on to others. You can be able to share that with others. Thank you so much for clicking on this episode of Millennial Entrepreneur. The ambition of the podcast is to show relatable stories from young entrepreneurs doing some incredible things to inspire the next generation, including you listening wherever you are. We've been doing this podcast for over three years and the ambition has not changed. The only thing that has changed is the scale of where we want to go. We want to bring on bigger guests for you guys to show more and more relatable and inspiring stories from young entrepreneurs across the world. The majority of you guys listening haven't subscribed to the podcast yet. All you have to do is click that subscribe button wherever you're listening on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and now allow us to bring on bigger guests and ask the questions to them that you really want to hear. And it really is that simple. So thank you again for clicking on the podcast and enjoy the episode. I'm doing good. How are you, Sina? I'm very good. Thank you so much for asking. I'm so thrilled to have you on. It's It's been a long time coming. Like I've wanted to have you on for a long time. And right. so... I, I can't wait to dig deep into some of the questions that I have. And as I said to you before we recorded, a lot of my audience are young entrepreneurs aspiring or already doing it. Mm. And I think right now, a lot of a lot of young people, I say, struggle with, with finding purpose, with finding motivation. And so those are sort of like topics I would love to go into a bit more. But before we jump into them, it would be great to get a, a bit of an introduction about yourself. Right. <laughs> great. Yeah, no. So, no, thank you for having me, first of all. I think it's it's amazing that you're cultivating a space where people can, you know, kind of go deeper into their own journeys and find their own purposes and meanings. Um, I was one such seeker, once upon a time. <laughs> My name is Ian, of course, uh, Ian Nene. Um, born and raised in Kenya. I lived majority of my life there and was a seeker from the beginning. Um, what does that mean, a seeker? What does it mean to you? I was always asking questions, mm. even if I wasn't getting answers for them. I, the, the curiosity to inquire. Someone actually said this interesting statement and he was like, evolution of inquiry precedes evolution of being. And he was basically making the point that if you carry on asking questions, you get a much better quality of life rather than mm. just gaining experience through life. You know, so I always was that guy who was just challenging different things. You know, I was born and raised as a Catholic and, you know, I found myself in the acting industry in a young age from the age of 11, 12. I was on screen performing and using all my holidays in that purpose. So I had experienced quite a bit to allow me to ask deep questions on purpose of life, the meaning of life and then yeah I kind of get got closer to that when um, I started growing up and life started hitting me a little bit harder <laughs> mm. and I needed to get those answers in order to you know live a much more happier what life. Hap what happened in that phase of your life? Right yeah so I was studying so I actually came to the UK to study I was studying at University of Kent um, came here for my first year it, it was doing my degree in marketing which was great and then when I went home to visit my family for the summer holidays because that's what everyone does during the summer they go visit their fam have a chill then come back for the next year um, my mom broke it down to me that she was diagnosed with cancer and it was on its fourth stage so it had moved she had gotten breast cancer but then it somehow had found itself into her lungs and was spreading rapidly throughout her body and um, obviously when you hear some news like that it it stimulates a lot of fear and anxiety. So that kind of probed me to then ask, like, what's the whole point of this life then? Like, you know, my mom is such a nice lady and then she's getting knocked up with cancer, you know, when uh, I know other people who are way terrible people in their actions, but they're walking around like everything is okay. So what is this world that we're in and what's the purpose of it? And I had that deep question in mind and then, yeah found some teachings that kind of 
helped me get closer to that understanding or an awareness to that. And that's what shifted your viewpoint from more of a a Catholic lens to to where you are now. Right, yeah. So obviously from, uh, you know, that Catholic boy raised in such a conservative space to now this spiritualist. I was living um, under the care of the Hare Krishna community um, founded by a personality known as Srila Prabhupada. And his mood was to share this wisdom Mm. of um, connecting with divinity um, to the rest of the world so that everyone can experience it so yeah i made that shift from that life um life as a you know a meek quote-unquote humble catholic kid to this um you know budding spiritualist in one sense who's exploring all these different things but under the guidance of uh you know some powerful teachings like mm. that yeah <laughs> so how did you how did you get over that like hump in your life i guess because that's a very difficult thing to experience right yeah i know you know when when, especially with someone like your mom you know it's of course an intimate thing isn't it you say mommy what am i gonna do she's meant to be the one that protects you know right and now she's the one who's in this situation needing protection yeah and also you know like for my situation my mom was my everything because considering i've only been raised by my mom you know my um biological father wasn't around in my Mm. life um, but yeah, the, the wisdom that I got from these teachings, which obviously we're going to break down as we carry on. Um, I think we all, rec- everything we know is a product of learning, mm. right? Um, and even if someone tells you that, you know, they read somewhere that they, you don't need to learn yeah. from a book, they've got it from a book, <laughs> you know, they got it from a higher source of wisdom. So we can never, um, dull down the importance of hearing from high authorities or from those who know or those who are aware. And so I think the the one thing that really helped me get out of that rut and answer a lot of these questions was that I surrounded myself with people who had clearer answers mm. and with wisdom that gave me clear answers, even if I didn't want to hear it. Mm. And um, yeah, and I worked with it and I chose that as my framework to shape my life in that sense. Mm. Yeah. That's really interesting. And I guess like, well, in, in that moment of your life, what was the key teaching that you kind of like, I guess, blew you away the most? The key teaching. And how old were wow. we actually at this stage? So this is what, I was what, 21? Yeah, so. Yeah, okay. so I was a bit yeah. young, yeah. I mean, I'm still pretty young, I'm only 26, <laughs> but yeah, no, um, there were so many key teachings that came, but the main one I could say is that there's more to life than what we think, you know? There's, I got to understand that life is just not, this existence that we look at and we val- we're trying to validate ourselves by. Mm. There's a whole other bigger picture beyond just what we know um, in our bodies and in this existence that we're in. So like there's a bigger picture, there's a bigger reality, there's something more yeah. powerful than us and we need to explore and connect to that. That was like the biggest teaching I got yeah. from it, yeah. I really want to dig deeper into like, I guess, because you were, you were 21 years old and, and now you're 26. How, has your perspective changed in that in that time frame, given that you only just came across those teachings and you, you at 26 now, like what are the, what's the experience that you've got in terms of like using that wisdom and like that, that knowledge that you've got from a higher power? Right, um, no, that's a very good question. The nice thing about this wisdom is that it's practical. So some of the few things, maybe I can share with you like a few things that were, you know, were there from the teachings. This one interesting book, and it's called The Nectar of Instruction. Mm. And The Nectar of Instruction begins in its first verse. It explains that you wanna have influence in the world. It's a natural thing. We all wanna have or leave like a positive impact in the world. So it says, do you wanna live a positive impact in the world? The first thing you need to do is to be situated within yourself. Um, And he talks about controlling yourself and owning your own domain, you know, connecting with the words that you speak, what you internalize, what you take in, the food, your lifestyle, and basically sitting in a space where you're connected in the self. Mm. And then only once you're connected within yourself, then can you be able to have a much more um, transformative impact in somebody else's life. Mm. You know, so that's like the first instruction, control yourself, have own your domain and then you can pass that on to others you can be able to share that with Mm. others and so that's one thing i noticed that when i was 21 i didn't own my domain you know my 
perception of happiness was really based on what I'd seen from the world. Yeah. And yeah, I yeah. judged myself as, or oh, I'm only successful if I reach if I reach this particular um, status quo, if I'm making X amount of money, yeah. or if I'm doing this, which is what kind of our world pushes us to perceive. I know. Yeah. yeah. But then, yeah, now I kind of managed to challenge that and be like, no. But um, what I find happiness and value within myself is more important than what the world thinks. Yeah. And so I need to invest in that. So I could see from 21 to now, I'm gradually focusing more on my needs as an individual rather than matching my needs with the collective requirements of the world mm. <laughs> in that sense. Let, let's yeah. talk about that a bit more because so many young people, especially now, like they're massively driven by by impact, I would right. say more so than a lot of other gener like previous mm. generations. But I feel like, and this is all from just personal experience, talking to other young, young founders and, and my own experience in terms of, I feel like this impact, it, it, even though you want to, to make some sort of an impact, you, you're still shaped by society in some way of right. like where you can deliver that impact. Mm. And so you're on some sort of a road where you want to deliver impact in these different areas, but would it actually make you happy right. in terms of like, is it your actual purpose in order to do this? And mm. I don't know, in terms of like what you've seen for young people going through this in terms of, because they're really driven by this, right? I don't know, have you have you seen that as well? Yeah, like people being inspired to want yeah. to like, yeah, I know that's like a popular thing. Everyone wants to do it. You know, you ask people, what kind of world do you perceive of? And they're all just painting for you this like utopia, yeah. right? Which they feel like they have the potential to, make happen you know you tell a guy I, I, you know like what would you do if you got a million pounds and they'll be like oh no no i'd do it differently mm. i i think not everyone else has done it wrong yeah. but i'm gonna come and like shape it differently so we've all got that like drive to want to spark change like that you're right mm. yeah what have you seen in terms of like for for young people though so for you um you've, you've come over to the uk and you studied here you've been here for a, for a while and you've right. seen You've seen things like like grind culture. You've seen things like trying to make money fairly quickly and just like building, building, building and not really having much sort of consider, consideration for your own health, both right. physical and mental. Right. So I guess like for you as, as an observer, what have you seen to be the most like the biggest challenge for young people? Yeah, I mean, no, that's a very good, wow. You, you got some good questions, bro. <laughs> um, I can say, just going back to that same point of um, finding our own domain, I feel like the main issue is that people are not have not found their domain. What what does that mean? Oh, like yeah. for you, for you, like right. the domain. What, like what does that mean? Yeah, like being situated within ourselves, being happy and content with who you are as an individual, mm. you know, and owning and appreciating yourself in that being, you know, um, like your Sina. Yeah, the scene has come from wherever he's come from, and he's comfortable in his skin as mm. being Cena. You know, he doesn't need all these external um, things to make him a comfortable person. But Cena within himself and in his values, mm. he's happy, he's comfortable. Yeah, and then now he can go and start making a step towards transforming somebody else's life or sharing wisdom or, you know, opening other people's eyes. So that's sitting within ourselves and being content with ourselves, um, comfortable in our skin, you know, uh, appreciating ourselves for who we are, even with our so-called downfalls or, you know, our negativities, but just being happy being ourselves. So that's a, yeah. would you say that's like a foundational layer in order to like, before you make any sort of impact in other people's lives and in the world of business or, yes. or whatever? Yes, I feel, and it's something that's very much popularly ignored. Like people just don't factor in, are you, are you happy within yourself? That kind of what's a question. The, what's now. the sort of like negative yeah. side effects of like ignoring that? Because it's like, it's very easy to just, I, it is very easy to ignore it yeah, because exactly. it doesn't, there's no, there's no day-to-day -day sort of impact of it in terms of like, because you can, you can make impact fairly quickly, right? Yeah. But working yourself takes a while and like fi a while, finding right. your identity and being comfortable in your skin, that takes a long time. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Cause yeah. I mean, the whole point where we do all these things where we want to make an impact is because it makes us happy. So we're trying to be happy. Ultimately, mm. that's like the umbrella um, or, or the universal principle is that everyone is doing these things because they feel like it will make them happy. Yeah. Um, but if you're not happy or comfortable within yourself, 
then how sure are you that the things that you're doing are going to get you to that happiness if you're already not satisfied within yourself mm. or comfortable or having an understanding of what happiness means for you, you know? Um, so we, we ignore it, but everything always boils down to that. It boils down to us wanting to be happy and us wanting to revel in love. Mm. You know, and obviously, yeah, we can probably break down that down a little bit more is that everything we're doing is because we want love and we want to be able to give love in how we understand it and receive love in a similar way. And that we understand is what's going to make us happy. And so if you're trying to chase all these things, thinking that it's going to make a proper impact and make you happy, then you should have an awareness of what being happy is for you within yourself. But, first. How, do you, but how do you find that? That's it. <laughs> I love it. So yeah, the teaching suggests that sit, that's sitting in your domain. The first way to be able to do that is meditation. Getting to sit and becoming aware of who you are internally. Mm. Then what happens is as you take that time to pause within yourself, you start to have an understanding of yourself from an objective perspective. In that, okay, so this is Sina. Sina has these good qualities. Sina has these not so good qualities. These are his strengths. These are his weaknesses. And this is the goal that he wants to achieve in his life. And this is how realistic it is. All these things start to come up within the surface. Is he happy in his job? Is he happy in his relationship? Mm. Is, he, is the things that he's doing currently driving him towards the purpose that he has assumed for himself? What is that purpose? All these questions start to spring up when you are sitting within your domain. And the best way to do that is through meditation. Mm. So I always advocate that number one is that you meditate. You yeah. need that time to yourself. Your mind is always all over the place like a monkey. Chop, 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 nonstop. So if you can block that for a minute and just be... You know, it can make all these things a little bit more clear yeah. and easier for us to understand. But people, people are afraid of those questions that they internalize because like I've seen it so, even, even with myself, it's like, as soon as you start getting things of like, in the back of your head, does, does doing a podcast make me happy? It's like, oh, where's my phone? Like, where's the TV remote? Like right. you try to bring in distractions in order to, in order to just not think about them because they're very deep questions that, right. I don't know that they're, they're uncomfortable in a lot of ways. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, I like that you use that word uncomfortable because the natural state of the world at the moment is that when something's uncomfortable, we don't talk about it. We hide it or we mask Even it. Even with conversations internally with yourself. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I was, yeah, I was getting to that. For example, we all know that we're going to die. Yeah. You know, as soon as you're born, you've got one direct ticket to death. It's automatic. Mm -hmm. But then you bring up the conversation of death with people. <laughs> anxiety. <laughs> mm. No one's gonna, you know, everyone's scared. Everyone's, they're like, no, we'd, we'd rather not talk about it. It seems like it's something bad. But just because something is uncomfortable to speak about or something's uncomfortable to address, doesn't mean it's necessarily a bad thing. Mm. You know, us getting to a stage where we address ourselves and start to ask these deeper questions and really address them and focus on them is a good thing, you know? Mm. And I think more of us need to be advocating for this, you know, because we're getting many people becoming successful. Many of them are becoming millionaires, but we're not seeing all these people becoming happy. And so they, whatever is their driving factor to getting to happiness isn't giving them happiness. So surely there's something we can rework there, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's honestly one of my biggest fears is like, for me personally, and I think a lot of people listening as well, it's the same, same sort of thing where, they work, I know how hard a lot of people, you know, listening work, mm. including, including myself, including, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's a lot of long hours and you, and you don't know whether it, it will lead to anything good. You don't know whether, you know, it's a lot of experiments, a lot of risk. And you also have to, you know, you kind of walk the line of your friends having very comfortable sort of nine to five jobs and right. they've, they're kind of growing their wealth, you know, at, at a, at a, at a pace. Mm. Whereas for you, it's like, you don't know whether nothing's this will guaranteed. Lead you nothing's don't know what's going to happen because, because it's, it's it's risky, and so the the added risk to that is like, okay, I'm working I'm working really hard now, but I'm I'm delaying gratification, which is what everyone everyone says, like delaying right. gratification, because in the long term this will make me a lot more happier than if I was to go to a restaurant now, like to a bar now, or see friends now. Like this is in in my mind or in many people's minds like short term happiness, but then if I work now. I'll be very, very satisfied in the future. Mm. But what I'm terrified of is like that long-term comes, I've made all the sacrifices, 
but the happiness isn't there. Isn't there, right? You've made all the millions, yeah. you've made everything that you had hoped for, but you're still not getting that happiness. Mm. And yeah, and so then as you're going through that journey, still having your goals, because it doesn't mean that we abandon our goals. People always get this misconception that if you're trying to focus on your internal journey, it means abandoning any other external commitments or goals you've made. No. But it's just that as you're working yourself towards those goals, you're also simultaneously working on your values and working on yourself as a being and working on your own internal journey. So it's something that you can do simultaneously. They're not mutually exclusive. That um, what am I working towards? Where's my happiness lie? And maybe, you know, in the beginning, it's okay. I, my happiness lies in me inspiring others to make a change in their life that's positive. How am I, ma- am I able to make that change myself? And what am I doing? Mm-hmm. Am I being real, you know? Because one of the things that we're also seeing at the moment that's creeping up is that we're having so many people preaching the right things, but not living by what they preach. Yeah. And so they're not really able to convince you. Because when you meet someone who's living by what they're preaching, it's just more convincing, right? Because they're living it. They're Mm. living in that world. My mentor says he works with the wisdom, with wisdom that breathes because they're living it. So, you know, you want to get to a stage where you're, as you're trying to find out your purpose and you're trying to understand your values, then you can align your values to your purpose. You know, Mm. you can start to marry the two that, you know what, what makes me happy is when I do direct service to others. So I'm working on this business. Where in this business can I have that opportunity to have that direct service towards Mm. others? Then you can start to work it out and redefine it. And until you then reach that stage where you feel that the happiness that you get from either serving others, which is where I think we get our happiness Mm. mostly from, or in impacting others is something that's satisfying you and then Mm. you'll just carry on (laughs) i'm gonna ask two very big questions you don't have to answer them at the same time because they're very big the first one i'll ask them at the same time and you can like tackle how you want but the first one for a lot of young people as well like similar thing they're they're trying to find their own identity in a lot Mm. of ways and um so how how do you start finding your values and how do you start finding your purpose in order to sort of align those two together are are they the same thing like are they are they like what are they and like how do you find them right you know so okay yeah no that's a very wow it's a very big question (laughs) those are yeah big questions i mean we're all living under certain values every day when we wake up in the morning we do certain decisions or we i mean we make certain choices because we find particular value in it Mm. you know and we hold those values dear to us that's why we make those certain choices so when we start to meditate and to take that time to ourselves, it's basically having um, an understanding of where our values are in totality. Or even though it might not be in totality, but in a much grander scale. Like, what do I believe in? What are my core beliefs? What's mm. my, you know, how am I viewing this world? What does happiness mean for me? You know, that's a question I could even throw at you. Like, mm. what does happiness mean for you? And it doesn't mean that then that becomes your fixed thing but once you identify that then as you carry on living life you could redefine what that happiness means when i was a kid happiness meant having loads of money i could do whatever i want you know as i started growing up happiness for me meant close connections and family you know as i grew up um and i but found those, these those teachings are, those are two like fairly different things in terms right. of in terms of one's like a future outlook on happiness and right. one's a current outlook on happiness right and right. it's like what makes you happy that that's my that's my point here in terms of like delayed gratification because you think your current stays and your future stay at the same when in actual fact they could you know drastically be different mm, i mean you if you choose to have certain values at present they don't need to change ultimately Mm. you know so fine your the point or let's say with that example that you've given is that your goal is that you're gonna delay your gratification right now so that you can ultimately achieve something greater later yeah so you're working on this principle or your value is that you work hard now and enjoy later right Mm. so then you invest in that now and then once you even get to that stage of enjoyment you'll realize okay this is an opportunity for me to invest in something else and keep on working, you know? So the value, your values haven't changed, but you have Mm -hmm. a clear understanding of the values that you run by, right? So you're still on the same value principle. 
um, and it's manifesting even in your different changes of life. So you're still working with the same principle of work hard, enjoy later, even once you've reached that goal. Go ahead, yeah. Go so, you know, you don't lose by having an understanding of what those values are. And you also don't lose in not knowing what those values are. But at least there's an attempt to get that understanding. I and think the, that's and those where, values then. So how do you how do you stumble across them? <laughs> yeah, I mean, wow. <laughs> right. I mean, if you self-assess, you, you understand how so you, you know, meditation. yeah, yeah, that meditation and introspection, journaling is a powerful one, you know, where you like look back and you think, okay, this is how I think, you know, mm. I'm, I've been scanning my past couple of days and I've realized that I'm an opportunist. I remember looking at my, um, uh, yeah, actually, this is just my own personal confession. Um, I was going through my journal and I don't really journal that often but I try my best to be as regular. So even if it's like once or twice a week, I give it a shot. And I was looking back and as I was reading, it was literally like, what? This, and I did this, what, like a couple of weeks ago and looking back to like all the, the stuff I'd written for my own 2019. And there was not much, but there was, it, it was significant enough to make me identify that. One thing about me is that I am an opportunist. Mm -hmm. If I don't see an opportunity within a person, I evade them and I look for a person I see an opportunity with. And that has its pros and it has its cons, mm. you know? Um, and so I realized, wait, I overlook so many people who might have so much potential just because the way I think is that, oh, they don't have value, even if they do, you know? So I got to identify that from myself just by meditation and introspection. And so now, whoever I need, I try to find value in them regardless of whether I think that they're great or not. Well, they might have something to teach me, mm. you see? So I learned that through my meditative practice, through introspection, through um, uh, looking at how I've been, my thought patterns and how they've been journeying. So that's been number one. And then number two is being in the association of like-minded persons, because then they reflect to you that, yeah, this is where your mentality is, you know? how do you think about that? And then you can start to be like, oh, wait, I actually have been working things out like this. Maybe I should re-strategize. Maybe I should reassess. Yeah. And then from there, you get closer to what you find your values to be, right? Mm. You are who you surround yourself with. I see all these guys, they're watching all these videos of, um, you know, I'll teach you how you can make a million in the next six months. And then they watch a couple and you see them starting to embody that mood of, you know what, I ain't got no time. I have to go to the gym from like 2.30 and do this and that yeah, and this. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. So that because they've surrounded themselves with that energy, they're finding that that's where their values are. Because these people that they're, that they're listening to are, give, yeah. are preaching to them or giving them that understanding that this is what your value should be invest in this do this every but my, my argument there would be like how much of it how much of that is it's actually them or how much of it is it's actually the, exactly. is actually like them trying to embody someone right so that's why you need the right kind of association that ba instead of them just feeding you with information that you can bounce in conversation with because then then from there you can understand your thinking you know you can understand um your your they, they're just acting as like a mirror that's reflecting to you where you're at rather mm. than just feeding you because in that situation, you're then just embodying somebody else's life rather than trying to redefine it for yourself. I, I, I see that a lot, especially with young people in terms of like, because there's so much stimuli, right. there's, there's just like so much to take in. Like there's, all over. There's, there's social media, there's TV, there's celebrities, there's, there's us. Like there's, <laughs> there's just so many things that people can, can, can take in uh, to either reflect or kind of like mirror what what they're already kind of thinking but like i don't i don't know what the sort of question here is, that i'm asking is but like how much of it is distraction how much of it is trying to find your own values yeah i i, I would say if it's probing you to act if it's probing you to go out there and be confident to make mistakes and experiment and do something then it's good for you that that would be like my like my somewhat like my judge you know, in that sense that wherever you're getting information from, is it inspiring you to make the steps closer towards your purpose or towards the journey that you've envisioned for yourself? Mm. Do, do, do those principles align with the values that you've set for yourself? And we all have our internal values. We all know what we believe in. Mm. Like I was hanging out with my friends the other day and I'm a vegetarian and I, and I, I, 
I've made that like my established value that, you know, I am a vegetarian and mm. they were there talking about, you know, their ham sandwich and the amazingness in that. And I didn't let that affect me mm. because I was rooted within my understanding of my values. So even when they reflected something to me or, or they bounced something off with me, I stood my ground in my values. They were appreciative of that. And they were like, you know what? I respect that, you know, you're not phased by the fact that, you know, we're eating meat or mm. we're discussing it and you're still well, that's, that's another sort of arm of like being comfortable in oneself, yes. right? Like yeah. you, you can you can bounce those things off. Exactly, because yeah. you have self So it all boils down to that working on the self and connecting with the self. And then once you do that, then you, you, you're you not just listening to people because they say th things nicely, but you're listening to them because they mirror your values. You know, I'll be like, yo, no, no. I appreciate Cena's talk because he has a similar value disposition as I do, you know? Mm -hmm. So I connect with some of my teachers based on that. Like I hear them sharing and I'm asking them questions and I feel like we have a similar element of reasoning. So then I'm comfortable in taking guidance and shelter there. So that won't be a distraction because it's helping me in my character formation and in my activities and in how I live my life. Mm -hmm. But if it's not prompting that, if it's just words, and people are good with words. Yeah. So if it's just words, you realize, okay, I'm doing all their sessions, but it's not probing me to act. So you need the spaces that probe you to act, that are challenging you, you know, in that way. So we've talked about impact. We talked about value. So the last one would be would be purpose. Mm. So that's and that's the probably the largest question of the th of the three, I would say, right? Right. Yes. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah. We go. We go very deep on this we, podcast. No, really, really <laughs> deep. Um, yeah. Purpose, everyone, we need a purpose, you know, and people then invest their times in trying to find purpose. I was fortunate that I took shelter of teachings that gave me purpose. Um, you know, that in, in one sense, helping me identify who I am as a being in this world and my connection with, um, you know, higher energies mm. and how my goal would be to get myself to that higher awakening and see if I can inspire others to do the same. And that's what like I really learned, you know, as a monk who lived in the temple and studied these teachings. They gave me purpose because I was focused and invested on myself for those three years, you know. Um, and so I think, yeah, for people to get like a clear understanding of their purpose, they need to be invested within themselves, you know, in that kind of way, in like a, in a, in a, in a super introspective yeah. way and and in having that understanding then you can understand what's my goal in this life what's my purpose for this world what am i meant here to to leave behind because one thing we can notice and that this is exciting me is that we're destination beings everyone is looking for the next destination what to do next how to get where next we're all destination beings we're driven by this element of destination so we're all purpose driven because every destination comes with an objective comes with a goal comes with a uh, a purpose like that and so we need to figure out what our purpose is and so we need to have a clear understanding of who we are then our purpose can become more clear and then from there we can exercise it and make it, you know, be manifest in our reality in that sense. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, that makes because my one of my my next question was like, what actually would purpose be? And I, I think you described it very well there in terms of like being destination beings and like that that that's just that encompasses all aspects of life actually. It doesn't just it's like I'm going to in business especially, but in terms of like meeting people and, right. and you, you were talking about like you want to meet people that have some sort of um some sort of a value for yourself as well. Right. So like it, it's, I, I completely, I completely see that. Yeah, no, for sure. And it, it, even like from a corporate perspective, the idea just popped in my head. We're more attracted to an organization that can clearly give you their mission statement, right? That can give you like, these are our goals. This is what we're trying to achieve. And the, the if, even if the mission statement is small, so long as it hits the nail on the head, that becomes attractive. Cause like, oh, this organization is driving us towards this destination that's their objective and so you become motivated because you see oh there's a purpose there's a drive and i want to be part of that purpose i want to be part of that drive like that so we need that we you know yeah yeah i've seen i've seen a lot of people getting stuck in 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 nine to five in the corporate world when in actual fact it's very clear even from me as an observer that they would be happier working for themselves or for a smaller company or even having more free time to focus on family and relationships mm. However, you, you made a very good point there in terms of if, you, if you're not co confident in your 
purpose enough because you haven't done enough meditation or you're, you're yeah. kind of unsure, it's a lot more, it's a lot easier and it's a lot more comfortable to align yourself with a, with a company purpose. Right, exactly. Because what stops us actually, just based on that, what stops us from uh, making most decisions in our lives is fear. Fear that I'll mess up. Mm -hmm. Fear that uh, I won't look as good as I want to. Fear that it won't pan out as I want it to. And so this fear limits us. Fear is coming from a lack of confidence. A lack of confidence comes from a lack of awareness. So if there's no self-awareness, there's no self-confidence. And if there's no self-confidence, how will you be? You, you, you'll, you'll have fear in anything that you try to, to jump into. And not to say that it's wrong, but the more that fear stops you from acting, then the harder it becomes for you, right? In that mm. sense. So you become, and then, then the company becomes your identity. Yeah, then you're out of safety, then you jump yeah. to a company, to an organization, which can get all those things secured for you. So you just feel, ah, let me just do this. But internally, you know, you've got something greater. So then you're not happy. I'm actually dealing with something similar <laughs> to this right now, where, and this is where I can sympathize with the world, is that you're kind of forced in this whirlpool of, you need to pay bills, you need to do this, you need to do mm. that. And so you, there's not much time Yo, we, we're made to feel like there's not much time to invest in that self that we just have to jump onto something and yeah. latch onto it. And then, you know, that becomes like the crossroad. So I'm actually experiencing something like that right now. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't that just show the human desire to like require purpose though? Right. It's like, we, we need that. And it's like for you to be like, and I know a lot of people listening, this this sort of conversation wouldn't be their cup of tea, right? Like right. Going, going deep into these, into these things. Either, either they'll dismiss it or they'll be like, oh, this this, this sounds like too wishy-washy. It doesn't really right, sound like right. effective action. I mean, a lot of the episodes that we've got, is like, it's very step-by-step, step, but I wanted to have this conversation because right. I think it's a very important message for young people to listen to. And so I think from what you've just said is like purpose is is fundamental to, to, to happiness, as you were mentioning. It is, yeah. And it's like, if you, if you can't find that, then what do you do? You'd latch on to... A, a more collective purpose, which yeah. is, which would which would be a, a company, mm -hmm. right? For example, yeah, yeah, exactly. And you and you work with that in the hopes that it it's it might give you the satisfaction and fulfillment that you're seeking. But most of the times, it won't. It's just because it's giving us a temporary shelter that we're in it. And so the bold people, and we'll see the bold businessmen, the bold entrepreneurs, are the ones who are ready to take that risk. Of you know what. This is the, these are their values, but this is where my values are. And so I'm willing to jump and get away from that in the mm -hmm. hopes that me fulfilling my value and my purpose is going to get me to where I want to be like that. Mm. Yeah. And by the way, quickly for anyone listening, I'm not dismissing people that actually find happiness in a nine to five because a lot of people do. No, for sure. And, and that's completely fine. If yeah. anything, I'm, I'm very envious yeah. <laughs> because it's like, it's a, it's a lot more simple. Yeah, and they found a, something they groove they, with. They, yeah, yeah. And, it, and it's like, it's... It's very consistent. And if anything, if you found happiness at a young age in a corporate environment, then good for you. Like that's, that's, mm. that's, as you were saying, that's the destination we want to all go to. Yeah. But I know a lot of people don't, don't have that. And you can tell when you're speaking to them and they're like, I mean, even, even speaking to you right, right. now, like you're yeah. in that environment and you want to, you want to sort of like pivot. Um, and so, yeah, it's, I think a lot of young people are, are struggling in that same story. Yeah. It's such a, and, and I, I, when I was at the temple as a monk, I never, I overlooked a lot of these things, but now that I'm actually in the world and having to work and, you know, I found myself in a nine to five situation, I can really sympathize with the experiences that individuals are having, you know, in trying to find themselves, but being trapped in a system that requires so many things and feeling that I need to fulfill those first to get leg room to kind of do what I want to do. And it's, yeah, it's such a difficult place to be in, but the more we kind of come together and have these kind of conversations, I know whoever will be listening to this podcast will at some point be thinking about their own purpose and their own drive to do whatever they're doing. And if their objective with themselves can be able to come out of this saying, okay, I'm more aligned with my purpose and my goal, or I don't even know what my purpose and my goal is. And I need to explore that by taking more time to myself, by meditation. I think meditation is such a powerful tool that we all should get the luxury of experiencing you know mm. you just it's just you sitting within yourself and rebooting you know if our phones never went on a charger you know 
they're always just running, mm. you know, how, how much would they be able to serve us? But, you know, um, you charge the phone for a while, then it's got enough energy to keep you going. Similarly, recharging the mind, you know, and really just taking a break from it and just being able to sit within yourself will boost the body up so you can be more effective and more productive. And we've seen stats that show this, that those who um, are engaged with a much more meditative practice are much more effective in goal setting and achieving their purpose mm -hmm. or in doing things. There's, you know, statistics to prove that also. So I always advocate introspect, meditate, go within. Yeah. yeah. You said something very interesting though, because you said, we need to give our minds a, a break. That's the yeah. word that you use. But I know a lot of people would say, this doesn't sound like a break. It sounds like active work. And I feel like a break for me would be turning on the TV and just like my mind just like doesn't really function in terms mm. of like I'm just taking in the stimuli. Right. So like you saying it's a break is a very, it's like the opposite of what it, a lot it of people think. It seems like, it, right? Yeah. yeah, you know, it does seem, it's like, yo, taking a break is, I'm supposed to be not working. Yeah, you're I'm supposed me to work. just be lying down watching TV. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, what does that do for your mind? Okay, so for example, um, you know, you've come from work. Your mind was, because the mind is kind of like a radio frequency. It's picking up all these different frequencies in its environment, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So you've been in an office space working on deadlines, objectives, this deliverables, whatever. Then you come back home. And the first thing you do is turn on Netflix. So then your mind has is now merging those frequencies with these new frequencies of, oh, there's this sitcom and this is interesting and it's got this actor and this is hilarious. And wait, what other movie have they done? And so it's been engaged in another uh, frame of frequency, which we're perceiving to be a break. Yeah. But that's not really a break. You've just diverted the mind to thinking about other things. But that's just a break in one sense from the thoughts you were experiencing before, but not really a break from the mind, you know? But when you meditate, you stop, you're taking that pause from everything, from the thoughts from Netflix, from the, the work objectives, from the relationship and just being present still in the moment. And by being in that space, you become more aware of a lot more things within the self that you wouldn't have noticed because you were busy following the frequency of the mind. Mm. I don't know if that makes sense like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. Because the way I see it is like, yeah, it's kind of like a stream, right? Like you can get, you can get pulled into different directions. And, but if you just like try to stand still and like just try to take everything in. Yeah. But it's 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 a difficult task. It's like a difficult it's, task, especially yeah. in like this this uh, this age, it's it's very difficult. And like young people trying to navigate through this, is, it is it is challenging. Yeah. I want to ask you though. I, I asked you this sort of implicitly earlier, but like for you, um, looking at like young entrepreneurs specifically, and I know you've you've come into contact with a lot of them. What's the sort of like biggest challenge you've seen for them? Yeah, I, yeah. The same disease them not being situated in themselves. That is what I think is, is, I always get the same element of anxieties. They creep up almost to the point where we kind of know, you know, that a person is not self-situated because the same doubts, the same fears, the same anxieties creep up because people are not situated and confident and comfortable in their skin. Mm. They're not situated in who they are as persons. They don't find value in themselves, you know? Um, and so in trying to connect to the higher purpose or with what they think is a higher calling, it's, there's such a stumbling block because that inner confidence of being is lost, you know? And I think this is where a lot of, we need to go inside. Mm -hmm. We need to go internal. We need to have that internal meditation and self-reflection. Mm -hmm. And that was, I, th I always feel, and yeah, maybe I'm too strong on it and maybe I need someone else to convince me otherwise, but I feel like that's where the disease is because it all boils down to us being happy and being reveled in loving exchange or reveling in loving exchange. That can only happen once you're aware of yourself. Mm -hmm. to be, in order to be able to give love to somebody else, you need to know what love is. Otherwise, mm -hmm. what are you giving? In order to be able to be successful, you need to understand what success is. Otherwise, what is being successful then? You mm -hmm. know, um, These things need to be clear within the self. And that's a big stumbling block. And I'm noticing those who tap into that and kind of have that element of self-awareness, boom, they're moving. And they're moving so powerfully um, 
that the impact they're making is tremendous because they're convinced and they're confident and they're comfortable in mm. themselves. And so they know in any meeting, in any, you know, um, conversation that whatever they're giving is of value, they're confident and then they can actually be able to transform. Mm. Yeah. What do you think of hustle culture? Hustle, I mean, <laughs> so wait, how do we define it? So hustle culture in the mood of just- How, how would you define it? Because you you, yeah. you probably have a similar definition to me. Right, just like do it, just, you know, go, go ignore, out there. Ignore and, everything else, just work. Yeah, just work, you know? Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I could do it, to be honest. It's one of those things I don't personally believe in because I feel like, if something has meaning for you and you've got strong connection of love with, you will invest everything in, you know? It doesn't always have to be a negative fight. Like, you know, some people say, if you find something that you love, it will never feel like a job. Why? Because it's aligned with who you are as a person. You know, there's love there, there's happiness there. Mm. So you can do whatever it is, you know, and not feel like you're in a job. Um, Hustle culture is kind of, in one sense, a good thing because it teaches you tenacity, drive, you know, focus. Don't lose sight of your goal, which I think are important principles. But I also feel like be in touch with yourself, then hustle, mm. you know, connect with yourself, be clear about who you are, then put in the work, you know, because then you don't, you, you don't leave any leg room for mistakes because you know who you are. Mm. But if you don't know who you are, you're having to self-discover later. You're having to, to figure out your values later. But if you start to invest into that now, which hustle culture doesn't give you that opportunity to, because it's just like, no, go, go, go. Mm. Then you can be able to put in the right hustle in the right place. You can be able to properly grind in that mm. way. I don't know if that makes you're sense. You're hustling in a direction and a direction, um, you're hustling a direction that you don't necessarily want to be going to. Right. If you don't know. If you don't, exactly. Yeah. But if you know, it's like Google Maps. If you know your final destination with clarity and you have an awareness of your current location, boom, Google Maps gives you everything. The shortcut, the one with the most traffic, the one, you know, that, you know, there's like most like traffic lights. You get all the awareness of, okay, this one's going to be better, right? This yeah. one's not it. Because you have an understanding of your current location and your final destination. If you don't have an understanding of both, or of at least one of them in coherency, where are you going? So like if maybe you know your destination, directions. you know your destination, but you don't know where you are right now. So how are you getting to your destination if you don't know where you are right now? Or you know where you are right now, but you don't know your final destination, where are you going? You're just moving and that has a lot of risk. And, right? that, and, that's, and that example would be within entrepreneurship. Yeah, also within, within entrepreneurship, within relationships all different facets can be worked on the same principle. Where am I going? What's the goal of my business? What's the goal of this relationship? What's mm. the goal of my life? Where am I right now? Am I, and how far is it gonna take me to get there? I can get that clarity on all these different facets. That's yeah. amazing. <laughs> We've discussed a lot of things. I is there, know. Is, is there anything we've missed out? Is there anything? <laughs> oh that you, my god! I think we've covered like a lot of things. Yeah. I, don't, I can't even like remember everything. Like it's been it's been a lot of different. Yeah, things. there's been a lot of things, but I would boil it down to individuals needing that element of introspection and working with the self, connecting with who you are, and having that element of self love and appreciation, affection, mm -hmm. allowance you know, um, appreciation of who you are as a being and then confidently from there move on. We've all experienced life. We've all got our traumas. And in many ways, our traumas show in how we live and in the kind mm -hmm. of jobs we do and the kind of careers we, we choose to take part in. It's because of the traumas that we're living in. Meditation and introspection allows us to heal these traumas and to not be defined by them. And then we can make such stronger um steps in our lives, such stronger decisions and really live the lives that we want, mm -hmm. you know? And then actually the joy is not always in the destination because I think the intelligent person will realize it's the journey that's the jo where the joy is. It's not really reaching that mark, but it's in getting to that mark and getting to that mark with that awareness and that self-love and appreciation is vitally important. And I think we need more people doing that mm -hmm. in the age that we're in. That's amazing. Um, yeah. Normally at the end of the podcast, I would say, um, how can people stay in touch with you and stuff like that? But the question I want to leave everyone with is if you've got one message for young people listening, what would it be? And then we can le just leave them with that. Mm. Wow. <laughs> if there's one message, I've got loads. <laughs> I would say 
Just like this book called the Bhagavad Gita, which I would highly recommend for anyone to look into. It's like kind of like the ABCD of your internal journey. I would say the, my biggest takeaway, if you, there's nothing else you get from this, is that, you know, there's more to life than your job, your career, and the direction that you want externally. And there's a lot of, you, you've got a lot of opportunity in connecting with who you are and in loving who you are. Mm. And once you do that, and if you can do that and really have that self element of self-love and awareness and appreciation, you can go out there and transform others and get them to also be happy and feel the same love. Because that's what we're all looking for. Everyone's looking for love. Mm. All your businessmen, all your billionaires, all your, you know, all your broke people, mm. you know, all your guys in the grind culture, they're all looking for love. And we, I think we categorize love just as like a romantic relationship, but everyone's just looking to have loving exchange, an exchange that is of servitude. And so we'll work so hard so we can enjoy these things with our friends. But that real love comes from us tapping within. And the quicker you can do that, my homies, the better <laughs> yeah um, thank you so yeah. much for coming on the podcast thank it's been you. such a pleasure <laughs> a lot of value so yeah I, I i hope at least one message transcends uh, to people listening so thank you so much again and i'm sure we'll speak very soon thank you for sure thank you thank you for having me